Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. This is a precursory session to the graduation and uh, opening ceremony of, of this school year. And this will cover or showcase uh, three of our uh, fresh graduates and will mostly serve as inspiration for our uh, a new uh, cohort who will start their uh, studies now, but also for those of you who have recently graduated, you can kind of um, enjoy together again some of these exciting works. And um, I would like to thank uh, for our speakers for accepting the invitation. And the first uh, speaker is uh, going to be Magna Ayer. I would like to ask you to share your screen. Magna is not here in the room with us, but she is joining us online. So you will hopefully hear her voice and see her presentation here on the wall. Hello. Uh, I hope I am audible to everyone and that uh, everybody can see my screen. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. So I think uh, I'll start right now. So a very good evening, good afternoon to everybody. I am Meghna and today I will be giving you a very brief summary of the research that I did as part of my thesis. I did it in collaboration with Labri at the University of Porto. I worked primarily on producing explanations for the classification results of CNNs, CNNs for the people who don't know, it's convolutional neural networks, with an application uh, to medical images. So to begin with, the first question that we ask is, what are explanations? Very simply put in, in the most simplest terms, it is just determining which input features when given to a network contributes the highest to the output that we are going to see. The second question is, why do we need them? Well, CNNs today are very popular and are being used for a multitude of applications like classification, segmentation, key point localization, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they are often seen as black boxes. That is the question of why did the network predict what it predicted is often not answered at all. As humans, we know what we see in the image to understand what conclusion we come after looking at the image. But we don't know this about neural networks in general. Also, it is interesting that in a study, it was found that an, a CNN, a simple classification CNN, was predicting the class wolf based on the snow that was present in the background as that was the common feature in all the wolf images that were used while training and ended up classifying a husky as a wolf because of the snow that was present in the background. Such furious results would generally baffle us if we don't check what features in the input image led to that output. That is where AI comes in. It is important because we want to have a large scale adoption of these kind of deep neural networks. When we want to do it, trust in the network, what it is going to uh, predict, the reliability of it, the privacy, and a lot of ethical implications also come into this because of the biased decisions that it could end up giving if we are not very sure of what the network has learned. Of the many methods that exist, one of the ways to produce an explanation is through the creation of heat maps, something similar to the image that is shown in the slide when dealing with images. In this image, these highlighted regions have been found to have contributed to the particular words that have been generated as a description by the network. In my work, I only focused on the explanation of hence for the case of classification. Uh, so to begin with, the first couple of months of my work was involved in performing an extensive survey of all the different methods that have been proposed over the past few years, and then attempt to categorize them and create a taxonomy so that we could compare different methods and understand where the research trends are going. So for this case, uh, we came up with four different categories and 
I was able to summarize all of this work as a review paper in a journal. Uh, and I have provided the reference here. I won't go into too much detail of it as it might get a little bit technical, but this is the uh, observation that uh, we came up with. And these are the four categories that we proposed. Moving on, uh, other than those methods that, that I presented in the previous slide, my primary focus was on a recently uh, proposed and developed feature explanation method called FEM. Actually, this method has been developed and proposed by a previous year IPCV student. Uh, and my uh, task was to work uh, on further modifying this so that the final uh, explanation maps were even better, so, so as to improve its performance. The primary intuition behind these methods is that in a CNN, we'll have multiple layers and the last the deeper the layer, the more structural information about the objects uh, they would contain. This is a more common popular observation that we know of. So the intuition is that from um, these last layer convolution features, find out the more strong features and map them to the uh, input image that we have given. So as to assign an important score to each pixel in the input image, and this score would be then uh, somehow it would tell us how important was this pixel for the particular uh, output that the network predicted. Given the times that we are in, uh, the choice of application was with uh, chest X-rays of COVID lungs as uh, as the uh, application for this case. The data set used is COVID X. It's a large data set that has been combined. Uh, that is a combination of multiple open source uh, uh, data sets that contain a large number of COVID uh, lung images. Along with just COVID, it also has uh, the normal and pneumonia also uh, pneumonia classes also within it. In the same paper that this data set was proposed, the authors also gave uh, a new model, a completely new architecture and a new model called COVIDnet uh, that performed that has really good performance on this data set. So. My first task uh, towards this application was to come up uh, to propose that when we have a problem that needs fast results, that has really high impact like COVID, uh, then creating a tailor-made network like COVIDnet, like the authors had pro proposed, would be very time consuming and it would need lots of validation as it is an architecture that nobody has used yet uh, before. So instead, we can very well use well-known architectures and perform cross-domain transfer learning with ResNet and Inception to get good baselines. And we could also use very simple global attention blocks called the squeeze and excitation, which is mentioned as SE in the table shown here, uh, which, which, as you can see from the accuracies, can perform as well or even better than the tailor-made COVID network. Uh, as seen in the accuracies given here. So this helped us to uh, get an idea that with binary classification between normal and COVID, transfer learning did work out well. So we moved on. So the next stage was to come up with uh, a multi-level schema. There are three classes, normal pneumonia and COVID, and there is very high imbalance in this data set. COVID images are very low and the other two are very high. So in such a case, just training a single classifier to differentiate between all these three would not be very easy and would require a lot of fine tuning and parameterization to ensure that the network learns it correctly. So what we proposed is that we use a set of binary classifiers and then we arrange their decisions in such a way as shown in the tree that I have shown here in such a way that the final result, in the final result, we have a very low number of diseased lungs be it pneumonia or COVID, they are very low number of them are classified as normal, that is healthy, which would have the highest impact. So the idea is to propose to go from multi-class to multi-level in the hope to have a set of well-performing classifiers that focus only on differentiating between just two classes. So that in the hopes that the overall result can be improved. We took inception uh, uh, network, uh, as it was the best performing with the binary case. And we trained it on the multi-level classification scheme that we came up with. And then we compared it with COVIDnet. And the results show that multi-level scheme seems to be working much better here. 
Simply put, a set of binary classifiers trained with transfer learning performs a little bit better than tailor-made networks. These tailor-made networks take longer to design, longer to train, and would need very much further validation before they can be adopted. So the idea is that using very simple uh, techniques, we can get really good results uh, without having to come up with something new every time. And the last uh, thing about this was that uh, the modification uh, that I did to FEM was in the way that a particular set of weights are calculated. Uh, so by doing this uh, in the images that are shown here, the top row has the uh, visualizations of the heat maps that were created by the normal standard FEM. And the second row is the one in which uh, the heat maps are with the modifications that I have made. So with this, we can actually see that here in this case, the uh, highlighted region. So red is means it has more highlight, it, is, it has a higher score, and blue is low. So it means that the visualization is better, it is more refined, and uh, the non-lung areas are not assigned a lot of importance. And this is important because medical experts can use these maps to check that the network is also looking at the regions that they would uh, and they can uh, trust the decisions of these networks even more. I also worked on a few uh, uh, SMRI images of the brain and applied similar explanation methods for the case of Alzheimer's disease classification. I won't present them again here in detail, uh, but all the work I have done has been presented as these papers. I have given the references and you are welcome to look at them anytime and discuss with me if you have any queries. And in conclusion, all I would like to say is that explainable AI is a very, very interesting field and has a number of domains of applications. And all the challenges that it has are still under research. It's a very new field and very upcoming field. And there is no one size fits all uh, that has been proposed yet. And it might be uh, exciting for some of you to try and explore it. Uh, and, and as my last words, I would just like to say that uh, the three countries, two years and an unexpected pandemic later, I hope that uh, you, uh, the new students also have as much fun with this program that I had. Each university has a lot of new domains and very different multitude of domains that you can choose from that you want to work with and the multicultural experience that the cohort and the traveling between countries offers help you as much as it did. Please, please feel free to reach out to me if you ever need to ask anything. Thank you and have a nice evening. Thank you very, very much, Magna. And I would like to say special thanks for your encouraging words at the end of your presentation and for the wonderful uh, delivery of, of your message, not only the uh, this description of the technical content. So we will have two other speakers and um, uh, they are supposed to be here in the room, I guess. So um, uh, Peter is going to be the next and then uh, okay, Peter, the floor is yours. Hmm. Uh, so I, I would like to welcome everyone. I am uh, Peter from, uh, and I'm from Hungary. And today I want to present you my uh, master thesis work that I did within the last semester. I did my work uh, in uh, Spain, in San Sebastian, in a company called Vicomtec. Vicomtech is an applied resource center that is mostly founded by the Spanish government and the European Union. They have uh, many departments uh, that you can see on the left, but I was especially at the digital media department. There they are working mostly with uh, 5G related technologies, augmented reality and virtual reality. Um, I, was I was working, I was working with, um, all right, I can. Mm. Uh, 
Meanwhile, I can continue. So I was working at the company with uh, virtual reality related topics that was in connection with multimedia. I was working uh, in a research group. Uh, we had um, weekly meetings, but due to the COVID, I needed to work from home. But still, I had quite a lot of chance to get to know the, the whole laboratory and the environment. And as I already mentioned, I was working with um, virtual reality in multimedia. The main motivation of the work was following. Nowadays, that we can see that most of the researches were focused towards, um, towards enhancing the quality of the user experience by increasing the resolution of the video, introducing 360 video, or making the graphics better. As we can see, these trends are mostly focusing on two senses of the humans, the eye and the vision and the hearing. However, these two senses, uh, you can go to the third one, please. Yes, the, these senses have some limitation as the, uh, for example, the eye uh, fails to perceive above a certain uh, resolution or uh, we, we, tend, we, we tend to fail to notice a very fast refresh rate. Therefore, uh, and it means that there is very limited, there is only annotations existing for this field. In my work, the main motivation was to offer additional sensory inputs uh, next to the uh, vision and hearing, such as olfaction and haptics. Olfaction is the capability of um, sensing things with your uh, nose, such as sense or smell. And haptics can, has many, can have many forms, such as vibrations, uh, temperature, or wind. And why is this actually beneficial? Our nose is a very, very uh, sensitive uh, sense. It can um, induce many conscious and unconscious action. And it can have an impact on how we perceive an event in a positive or a negative manner. Therefore, it can have many applications, like, for example, in product design or marketing. In addition, the olfactory sense is in connection in our brain with our memory functions. Therefore, we can, it, can either, it can also be used for teaching. For example, if, uh, if you go to a place and it has a horrible smell, you, you learn very fast that you don't want to go there. Moreover, uh, combining the, the vision, the audio, the haptics, and the olfaction, you can make a very realistic environment. That can be crucial in training scenarios. For example, the, the, uh, the smells are invisible and they can get through very easily through obstacles. So, for example, to a firefighter, it might be very important to uh, use uh, in training scenarios, not only their uh, eyes and their, uh, their hearing, but also all of their senses to make the best decision. Also, haptic feedback can be very ben beneficial for medical uh, trainings. Therefore, I was proposing a system that is capable of um, automatic recognition of, um, of olfactory and uh, haptic uh, content based on 360 degree video. 360, 360 degree video is very similar to virtual reality, but you are, you are only capable of viewing the content and not interacting with it. And in my solution, I may put it like this. Yes, in my solution, I was creating a parallel network that is consisting of a sync classifier and an action classifier. Uh, the sync classifier recognizing the global content and the action classifier responsible to the, uh, recognizing the local content in the video. And I want to show that in an example. This is a 360 degree video and the, I'm not sure if I can start it. I think I cannot. Um, the 300, in the 360 video, the global content means that the thing that is surrounding you. Here, if you look, you only see the forest. So based on the global content, you, um, you want to have uh, something, some smell that is related to the, the surrounding of your, that is the C classification. And the global, the local classification is, it, is that there is a person that is smoking on the screen. And the local event, the lo local, um, the local content should be always prioritized 
Because, for example, if someone starts to smoke next to you, you tend to pay more attention to that rather than your surrounding. And here you can see the, the system that I integrated my uh, recognizer. It consisted of uh, an olfactory device that actually uh, gave you the smell. It consisted of a VR glass that showed the 360 degree video and, and the haptic device that was uh, in the form of a gaming mouse and the server that was processing it. And my project had a very direct application. It was part of a European Union project called Traction. The aim of Traction was to bring the, the opera performances closer to the audiences. And uh, it was a very huge project, consisted of many artistic aspects and digital aspects. And my solution will be integrated into a, into a tool set that aims to help uh, artists integrate uh, additional sensory input into their art artistic solution. And how, does it going, how is it going to work? They intend to purchase some, uh, the, the system that I made, uh, that I showed you in the previous slide and put it into some, uh, some bus and go around the rural isolated parts of Ireland and show to, to people that are all cut off from the internet and all the part of this society so that they can also feel, um, feel the presence and not completely uh, be shut out of the uh the other part of the their uh, the society and uh, i hope that i will be able to publish my uh, results uh, soon in a, um, in a journal and i wanted to thank you for your attention and wish you good luck for your studies thank you very much Thank you very much, Peter. And uh, I hope um, these talks actually inspire you, um, especially if you're a new student uh, in the IPC program. Should you have any questions, we will uh, let you ask uh, after the third uh, uh, presentation. So you still have time to think about whether, I mean, if you want to ask the first two speakers something. Um, our last speaker uh, will be Yulia. So please, Yulia, the floor is yours. Uh, hello everyone, hello IPCD. I'm very happy to see everyone here is like uh, my students, my cohort and new students as well as like professors and teachers. Uh, my name is uh, Yulia Alexenka and this summer I'm graduated uh, from master's student, uh, master's degree in image processing computer vision, which I'm very excited. So I will be not really technical like the previous two speakers, but gonna do some general talk and hope I will inspire you to study really hard. So. so I would also like to speak about my internship. I would do like this, uh, which I actually finished uh, like three days ago. Uh, I did my internship uh, at the company called GoPro. I hope some of you may know this company. So these guys pretty know computer vision stuff and they're obsessed with this. So uh, for those who doesn't know, uh, this company does small cameras, which people like to, try to take for traveling or some extreme sports. So yeah, uh, the main office is located in Paris, in France. 
So there is a big research team uh, developing algorithm, uh, in particular in computer vision and image processing. So I was really happy to join this team and uh, see what I can do after two years of my education. So in particular, what did I do and what was my topic? Um, the topic was my of my internship as well as my master thesis was multi-frame super resolution. So idea is that uh, customers and users of cameras really desire cool photos and images to upload to Instagram or like to share with friends. But at the same time, company want to save money and they don't want to really produce big cameras because what it comes is the question, like if we want to provide really good quality images, it really depends on the sensor which we locate on the matrix which we locate uh, to the camera. And yeah, we could place really good sensor to GoPro camera, but at the same time, what we try to do is to have really small camera, which we can put to the pocket and take with us. So there's no point to make bigger cameras, right? So here where you can come computer vision engineers and say, hey, I know some set of tools which can help to get from low resolution image. I'm not really sure if it's quite obvious on the screen, but so what you can suggest is like, for example, with the camera, we can get uh, the image, which is uh, on the left. <laughs> Sorry, I always confuse where is left and where is right. <laughs> so on the left, and with some tools, with some algorithms, with some techniques, which called super resolution, uh, we can actually obtain the image, which is better in quality. Um, either, for example, it's pixel density. So the image size is quite same, but we can, see, uh, we can see the sharpness and we can see more details. So why it's called multi-frame is because uh, it's not just we sort of resize one image to another and we provide the results. But what we try to do is, for example, is for example, take a couple of images from different angles and then we try do some magic combining them and receive one image. So here is not really clear, but this mode, uh, which we see in the right is called super mode in GoPro cameras. So actually when we apply it on um, basic image, which we get, we can see more sharper uh, images and for example, more details in the area where the text is located. So um, I unfortunately can't share all the technical questions because of <laughs> confidentiality and top secret question. But if coming to results, uh, I'd like to share, for example, some of them. In particular, from the image which I got uh, on the left, it's called low resolution, it's the input. Uh, the proposed algorithm, which was developed from scratch, uh, can uh, sort of propose the super resolution, which is four times bigger, actually. So here, just to be precise, to place it on the slide. And uh, it definitely proposes more details in terms, for example, in the area of cars and uh, like the other landscape. Um, so in order to understand that it actually works and it's better, there is some classical methods which we can do. Uh, one of them is Boolean interpolation, and uh, I can assure new students that you will learn what is this. <laughs> so, yeah, it's quite basic uh, method, uh, and as we can see, it works, but it gives quite smooth output, which definitely we can sell to the clients. Right, we won't buy such images, which is just nothing. Uh, at the same time, the algorithm, which uh, was developed during uh, actually three months, uh, can produce quite sharp images with a lot of details. And it can be also later really implemented in order to do the other sets of algorithms like HDR, et cetera. So it's quite universal. And I hope that uh, my team at GoPro continue developing it. And later, which is really cool, implement it on the real camera so it will work. I'm very excited about that. So um, how actually I did it, I decided to place this on the slide in order to understand which topics and which tools helped me, which I learned during my uh, IPCV years here. So of course, uh, the three basics which you learn and which gonna be 
uh, very useful for you if you want to continue working in the industry or even academia. It's Python, it's C++ and OpenCV, and uh, I'm pretty sure you will try all these tools during your courses. At the same time, I would say the following topics were quite useful for me when I learned them. It's, of course, deep learning. It's a very popular technique and we can avoid it. So we will have very excited course in France. Uh, it's also inverse problems, numerical analysis. And uh, for example, I would say vision for multiple moving cameras because I work with uh, several images. It was uh, really useful. And if speaking about other skills or let's say soft skills, because every time you have an interview uh, you're going to be asked for these questions. I would say that this program uh, gives me the following one. It's, of course, time management, because without time management, I'm sorry, you can't survive this program, of course, because you have a lot of projects to do, a lot of assignments. At the same time, it's good writing skills, because you're going to do a lot of reports uh, every semester, and you really should be good at this if you want to have good marks. Uh, also, which is really cool and I really like uh, that I actually can do it now, it's uh, reading and understanding quite difficult academic uh, literature and articles and you pretty can understand why the authors proposed that method, not the different one. So this program should give you like the idea what's going on, what was proposed before. So I think it's quite good. And of course, I think it's a really good advantage is that you can work in an international environment because if you want to join any company, I believe it's going to be this type of uh, particular environment. Um, I believe, yeah, it's my last slide. So yeah, I hope that you enjoy your years during IPCV as we did. And I hope it's going to be useful for you. And yeah, good luck to everyone who just joined in this year. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Julia. That was uh, also an inspiring talk, I think. And uh, it gave some insights into like what goals you may have and what tools you may use or how, how you can make use of the courses that you will have the possibility to listen to. Now we have um, a few minutes uh, for questions, so does anyone have any questions to any of the speakers? <clears throat> Even if you don't ask anything, I don't think they will take it to their heart, but this is really a good possibility. If you want to ask unrelated questions, I think that's also okay, so. Maybe, are there any questions online? I'm not sure. Um, okay, okay, very good. Please, Franco, come forward so that everyone can hear you, okay? Yeah, so Julia, just uh, the question to know the, the size of uh, the images that you were working with were you putting the whole image in the neural network? Were you putting just small images? How were you handling that that situation, that dimensional situation over there? Just that. Can I ask the nurse? Yes. Oh. Yeah, if you can please come here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay, it's actually a good question because um, my internship was uh, divided into parts. Okay, the one which uh, I work is was not based on deep learning, okay? It's not artificial intelligence, not neural network. It's a set of computer vision algorithms. And that moment, my input was quite, uh, with the dimension quite a lot. It's original uh, images coming from the camera. So it's around 4,000, 4,000, wherever. So it's quite a lot. Yes, that's why there's Python and later there is C++ because with Python it works for days, for ages, I don't know what. So actually you need to also understand some software engineering practice in order to deal with the algorithms and data structures. The second part of my internship was about the deep learning 
So this actually is a popular data set which I showed on the image. Uh, the image is not so big because again, three months, I need to train the neural networks from scratch, the Gantics, a lot of ages, even with good GPUs. So the images were like around 200, 200. So it's not so complicated. So I work with different dimensionality, which is pretty cool. But yeah, working with five or oh, 4,000 by 4,000 is really, really complex. And this is what I got when I, for example, you come from academic to the industry, you understand like what skills you need to improve, for example, in order to track all these type of problems. Thank you. Thank you, both for the question and the answer. Any other questions? Yeah, your talks must have been very good. That means also, I think one could tell that how much you enjoyed uh, being part of the program or maybe being back here in Budapest. Okay. So actually, uh, those of you who are here in Budapest will um, have the possibility to ask questions also later today. Um, please be brave enough to approach each other. Um, this was just, uh, I mean, you know, highlights uh, as of introduction of the graduating uh, cohort. But uh, even when we are on the boat, I encourage everyone to try to get involved and, uh, um, you know, you can still make some um, exciting new uh, relationships here. So if there are no more questions, uh, no, okay, I give it the one last possibility. Any, maybe one last question has stuck in someone. Okay, so basically there's going to be a short break now then. And at half past four, so 4.30 is going to be uh, when we start the graduation and the opening ceremony for the school year. So please um, be back on time. And until then you can relax a bit or uh, get some fresh air. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome our new international MST students. I also warmly welcome those IPCV students here and via the online stream who received their diplomas today. Please stand for the entrance entry of the board. Please remain standing for the national anthem of Hungary.
I invite now the IPCV graduates attending the event online to switch on their cameras now. Let me welcome the director of our ceremony, Krzysztof Ivan, Dean of the Faculty, and Krzysztof Karac, Vice Dean for International Affairs. I ask the Dean of the Faculty to deliver his speech. Thank you very much. I would like to express my warmest welcome in this new normal, I think uh, we have to, uh, we can say partly in person, partly online, so in a hybrid manner. All, all our colleagues um, in the program, the program universities, and uh, all my colleagues here, all the students, graduating students, and new students here, and both online. Um, very warm welcome here from Hungary. And uh, I think, and as you will see uh, from the results, the graduation ceremony results, you will see that this has been already a successful cooperation between the three universities, uh, both in terms of uh, student numbers and in terms of, uh, of student grades. And my, my understanding is, and my uh, vision on this, on this course is that this can, this can help us grow into both a, a more industry focused uh, university, so more uh, connection and, and collaboration with industrial partners and both uh, more collaboration with research institutes and uh, research subjects as, as the main focus of this, uh, of this course or the program, uh, the image processing and computer vision, by my understanding, uh, can be found, applications can be found many, in many places. So uh, with further ado, I would like to express again my warmest welcome for anyone attending here or online and uh, hope we have a, a successful um, year or two years semester, four semesters ahead of us and a successful uh, journey ahead of the graduate students. Thank you very much. I invite now the representatives of the three universities of the IPCV consortium to deliver their speeches to the IPCV graduates. First, Professor Pascal Debrea, representing Université de Bordeaux, will address the graduates of the IPCV program online. Thank you. So, hello, everybody. And uh, I am very pleased uh, to see you all, of course, in a hybrid situation, but uh, to see you all for this graduation ceremony. I wanted first to congratulate every one of you uh, for your hard work and uh, your accomplishments uh, during these two years, especially uh, in the situation that uh, we faced, meaning that uh, we had courses online, we had courses in hybrid fashion, we had courses face-to-face, -face, and yet you managed to, to do everything well and uh, to, to uh, achieve uh, great results uh, in your uh, projects and uh, in your exams. So congratulations. It was a very tough uh, two years for everyone. And also, I wanted to say that uh, I know that we talk a lot about the teachings and the results and things like that, but I know that there were also uh, family problems and things like that during these two years and that uh, it was difficult, not only on the, on the academical point of view, but also on the personal point of view. And uh, again, congratulations for, for achieving such uh, great results. I wanted also to, to uh, give uh, personal thanks to uh, Peter, uh, Magna, and Julia for, for your presentation that were very good. And I hope that uh, this presentation will uh, give some ideas to, to new students to, to, to see uh, what they can do uh, at the end of, uh, of uh, the formation and uh, to, to see that you can make an internship in a laboratory or in a, in a company and that uh, the whole 
two years of uh, formation that uh, that you have will help you to to uh, to achieve uh, this kind of uh, of uh, internship and master's thesis of course i hope that uh, you you will have after uh, this uh, diploma that uh, you will have a great career either in the academical point of view and i know that a lot of you are uh, trying to to um, to make a phd thesis and so good luck with that and i hope we can see you soon uh, in uh, in some conferences uh, somewhere uh, and also for i wanted to welcome new students and uh, i hope that you understand with the three presentations that uh, that we had that okay there is an academical point of view meaning that you will have uh, teachings you will have courses you will learn about uh, image processing and computer vision but IPCV is also uh, full of uh, what we call soft skills, meaning communication, uh, trying to, to understand different cultures, uh, trying to work with people from an international point of view. And this is a great uh, opportunity to learn about that. And this is something that will help you to the, for the rest of, of your life. So congratulations again to, to all uh, graduated students and welcome to the new cohort. Thank you. Now, please listen to Professor Jose Maria Martinez representing the Autonomous University of Madrid. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the invitation to this double uh, graduation and welcome ceremony. Uh, Jesus Vescos, who is the IPC coordinator at UIM, uh, has not been able to join this ceremony and he sends me regards to all of you. I am Chema, officially Jose Maria, but uh, you may, you will know that I, I, I am always called Chema Martinez and I am teacher in the IPC B program here in Madrid as well as the co-director of the Video Processing and Understanding Lab, together with Jesus Vescos, uh, who, that is the research group where most of the teachers uh, of IPCB uh, are doing the, the research here in, in Madrid. In Jesus and in my name, first, I want to congratulate uh, the students that are graduating today. Uh, we, can, we can assure, taking into account the results of the courses and the three, at, the, at the three universities and also the master thesis, the three presenters today are just free samples and confirmation of the high level of the students graduating after concluding the program that you all have improved highly your technical skills in the image processing and computer vision domain. Uh, but we all hope that you have also enjoyed one of the most distinctive aspects of IPCV, the living in three European countries and most important, to be able to create a really impressive group of people, colleagues and friends for now and ever, increasing the size of the IPCV alumni network. Congratulations and all the best in the future for your professional and personal evolution. Secondly, uh, I want to welcome to the new students joining the IPCV community today. You are joining a very competitive program, as you know, in one of the most demanding research and innovation areas. Companies, research institutions, startups, and as well as academia, universities, of course, are demanding more and more people with a solid background in the technologies you will be see and you will study and make yours, yours uh, during the IPCB program. Artificial intelligence is everywhere, and computer vision and its foundations, image processing and bit processing in general, are a key part of this new era. Taking into account this, the uh, IPCB program has been evolving, including comments from previous students for solving problems detected. So please contact us for anything that you have any doubt or suggestion, because we are professors, but we are not uh, out of the program. We want to improve the programs and you students are one of the main uh, uh, actors in being able to improve this program. Uh, and also, uh, besides taking into account students' comments and suggestions, we have also incorporated the latest and novel technologies that appear year to year in this, in this area. For example, the everywhere present today deep learning, something that has been a revolution in computer vision domain, 
uh, it was not within the program. And in the last years, we are incorporating it more and more in order to, to create a program that is just in the, in the state of the art of the technologies that are demanding. Of course, without uh, forgetting the uh, foundations, you need to have a solid background in the, in the image processing and computer and uh, sorry, image and video processing tools because they are the basis upon uh, where you can develop uh, new ideas. But as already Pascal has said, uh, IPCV is not only academic technological and professional evolution. It is also an opportunity, as I have said also, to enjoy a unique experience in three different countries and universities, creating a network of colleagues and friends. We all hope that the pandemic evolves into a more stable situation. Today we have this sample with this hybrid ceremony and that you will also be able to fully enjoy the social, personal, and cultural experience that IPCV offers. Together, of course, with your study times, that. I have to say, will be a lot. And as you may have heard from some previous students, especially here in Madrid. Once again, welcome and see you in Madrid in a couple of months. Thank you. Finally, I ask Professor Karaj, representing Pazma and Peter Catholic University to deliver his speech. How do you pick your job, your position, or your company? Which offer looks best? What research topic are you most into? These are pressing questions that some of you have already faced and most of you will be facing. Either you are in IPCV or in other programs, but in IPCV, these have crucial significance. This is a question for all of us. Of course, for the fresh graduates, it's kind of obvious, but for those who start their programs, this will surface as choosing a tutor research project or thesis work or whatever project where you will be doing throughout the two years. But believe me, this is a lifelong question. So even for professors, this is something we have to ask ourselves. So again, what are the key aspects in our choices? Topics should be exciting, right? Is there anyone here who is not going for an exciting topic in, in computer vision? I don't believe that. Um, you also want to make a good living. So when you pick your company, you look at what salaries they offer. Very importantly, you want to work on a strong and good team, right? With people who are smart, but also good and friendly if possible and supportive. Today, I would like to put one additional aspect on the table. Social responsibility of an engineer. I'm pretty sure some of you have already thought about that aspect. What impact can I make? What values can I create by my work? Is the, is the, are these values only economic or um, will they set something to the life of people, of my friends, my family? These can be better nourishment or improved healthcare. We have seen example for this in the presentations before the ceremony. Uh, there are many areas where machines with smart vision do not take away jobs, but uh, create new possibilities 
and let us do our jobs better in a better way. My goal here is not to analyze the complex uh, relationship of automation and the job market. Rather, here and now, I would like to point uh, out and maybe plant some inspiration in you, into you to remember to care about your fellows when you make choices about topics. Those people who we live together with now and those who are going to be born later, your children, our children. Computer vision can help in many areas. Um, healthcare, encompassing many branches from mammography to ophthalmology. These are examples from previous IPCV students th thesis topics. And some further examples, agriculture, helping farmers in fighting uh, plant diseases or assisting elderly or disabled people or avoiding accidents by road inspection. These are all thesis topics for, uh, from, from um, IPCV graduates. Am I my brother's keeper? That is Cain's question in the Bible. And also the subtitle of a monography of Professor Tomasz Roszka, who was the founding dean of this faculty. Uh, he wrote this monograph about the responsibility we have uh, in today's modern society. I think many times we are also tempted to ask this question from ourselves because we lean towards choosing the easier way. It's easier to say we are not responsible. But in such situations, after learning a lot about how wonderful human vision is and how challenging it is to make it happen via algorithms in, in, in um, machine vision. Please remember when you apply all that knowledge that we are indeed our brother's keeper. I wish that you have a lot of fun, joy, and um, reassurance in doing so. And by that, I welcome all the new students and I wish all the best for the graduates. Thank you. Now I call upon Franco Caspe to deli deliver his farewell speech as one of the, the IPCV graduates. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> when I decided to apply to IPCV, I had one big, big goal in mind. Beyond the, the need to specialize myself, I had a clear ambition of having a valuable, relevant social experience. I had a degree for which I had worked for six years in the town, in the town where I live all my life. This time, I wanted to take part in a multicultural sharing and starting opportunity. After two years and with the invitation to give a speech, I feel humbled for having the possibility to express myself and address all of my fellow students, the IPCV newcomers, and the master's coordinators and professors. Thank you for this possibility. So to help me remember, I opened the laptop and I take a look at the big stack of pictures I took with my old camera, over two dozen rolls that spent throughout these two years. And I can't help but recall many memories that pop up just like the pictures I see in my computer. And one of the first roles I find is about the trip we did in Prague, remember? And between those photos, one memory with no pictures. When we were chilling in the park and Nano was teaching us some dance steps at night. We were suddenly surrounded by two police cars and one van. 
probably eight to 10 officers who appeared out of nowhere, armed with guns and a swift knowledge of the local law. You know, salsa is illegal in Czech Republic. Nah. Or maybe they received some complaints about noise. They let us go in the end. Most probably they heard the Spanish ladies chit-chatting. Just kidding. <laughs> Today they are very quiet. I think they're missing a soldier over there. <laughs> but yes, a cultural experience I wanted to do. That was my true goal. And besides studying and working a lot, sharing culture is what we did. Cultural dinners, birthday celebrations, Ethiopian New Year, Hungarian Christmas. Hungarian Christmas at our dear friend Gloria wins with Spriti and Nano. What a beautiful time in the countryside. I could not even pronounce a single name of the classic Hungarian dishes we had there, but they were amazing. Talking about Smriti, with Smriti and Mili, we would invite and cook for each other quite often. First time I went to their place, Smriti had cooked an amazing meal. Mili would bring the snacks. Then Smriti asks, do you like any food, don't you? Like vegetarian? Of course, I say, I like everything. You know, the only thing I don't like is cauliflower. That's what I did. <laughs> Wait, 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 I like it. You know, like, I wanna hit, please. She still doesn't believe me, but I actually love what she cooked. Or when we were at Peter's family house near Balaton, I indulged in a small scale forest fire in his barbecue pit. It was winter and it was at night. The humid coldness of the lake was very unforgiving, but I was so happy to do a barbecue that I insisted on the idea. We Argentinians do barbecue all the time, all year round. Many were upstairs playing games, waiting for the food. But as I stood on the backyard, arranging the wood, cleaning the grill, I remember I was not alone. Talar was there supervising the procedure. From inside the house, from inside the house. He lit it up in one go. He was very comfortable. <laughs> we had a very nice time in Balaton. Another time, remember when we did the Spanish trip? Many of us going from town to town in two cars, we explored the beautiful no northern coast of Spain. And Anne Claire, who was driving, was also carefully planning every detail so that we could all enjoy. Isn't that love, everybody? I'm still sorry that she was the only one who did not properly relax in that trip because there was so much to plan, so many places to visit. And somehow this reminds me of Lucas, always caring for the group, ready to write to us in light of a problem to recalculate a solution organize the group, write group responses, give proper feedback, articulate exam dates with professors, discuss the content. Hope, honestly, I have never seen him as relaxed as of today. <laughs> Talking about this, I can't forget to remember Nano coming last minute to one of the final exams because he had slept through half of it, but of course he managed to pass anyways. You know, that. I think the trick is that in IPCV, your biggest challenge is yourself. For we all knew how to properly study and prepare for an exam, but I believe we all learn to trust a bit, a bit more on each other, to team up, to better manage our time, to discern the things that matter from the th things that don't. We share houses, time, and emotions, study together and support each other. And to me, what matters from all this is the learning path that took us together here where we are now. This path, we walked a good portion in each country where we met and spent much time with the IPCB professors and the coordinators. And so I would like to thank the IPCB professors and coordinators and the university personnel in all for their effort throughout difficult times, for their flexibility to adapt to personal and global circumstances, for making themselves available at any time and for, and for their understanding and sensibility, for replaying those last minute emails and being able to bring things to fruition. We know it has been challenging for you too, but I think our presence here is a clear proof of your success. To the new students, welcome to IPCB. Saying that you have to study is an obvious statement, but I would like to say, remember, think independently as this is an ever changing field with different approaches to similar problems. Seek to specialize in what you like, which often may lie outside a little bit the curriculum or, or much more. Stay updated, share ideas and discoveries with your fellow students, work in personal projects that capture your interest. And then 
Be together, include each other. Use wisely your free time. Travel and enjoy yourselves. Seize this opportunity beyond the academic part. To put, into, to put it into cold economic terms, the social skills you can develop here can ultimately be more valuable than what it says in your grade transcript. Well, at least for me, heart and mind are equally as important. So to my fellow students, to my friends, thank you for all the beautiful moments we share, for all that I learned from you, for letting, to be, for letting me be myself. I am proud of us all. Let me tell you that my goal is fulfilled. I hope that, like me, when you think about the IPCB, you don't think of image processing only. I hope you also think of family. And remember all the time that we have together with a smile. Thank you so much. The graduates now take the engineering oath. Please stand for the oath and say it together as Hunor Lotsko reads it line by line. Ready? I, Hunor Lotsko. Please repeat. <laughs> Gradu graduate of the Pazma and Peter Catholic University. Solemnly swear that during my professional career, I observed the written and unwritten rules of science and ethics. I make all possible efforts to develop constantly my knowledge obtained at the university and to use it to serve the universal culture. I continue to respect the mentality and traditions of Pazmai Peter Catholic University where I studied and I contribute to its reputation with my work. So help me God. Please take your seats. Now comes the handing over of the diplomas. First we hand over, I ask uh, Professor Ivan to hand over the honors diplomas first. Congratulations for those who get the honors diplomas today. Graduate with honors of the image processing and computer vision speci specialization of the computer science engineering MSc program. Yulia Alexeyenko. Smriti Yoshi. Julia Simon Chico. Lucas Uzolas. The following students will receive their diploma with honors by registered delivery. Ayar Megna Parameswaran. Are Gavi Hala von Berge.
Berta Fernandez de la Morena. De Salfent Avnurie. Zahid Hassan Tushar. The graduates of the Image Processing and Computer Vision Specialization of the Computer Science Engineering MSc program. Franco Caspe Santiago. Marta Fernandez de Barrio. Anne Claire Fouchier. Mohamed Mohaimi Nul Islam. Let's go, Hunor. Sabo Peter Yosef. The following students will receive their diploma with honors diploma by registered delivery. Uh, Ricardo Alejandro Luque Ramirez. Javier Rico Reche. Sietal Alvasim. Jing Wen Yang. Thank you. Please take your seats. Now, as you already have been accepted to the Engineering Society, I invite Kazi Ahmed Asif Fuad, representative of the IPCV Alumni Association, to talk about the IPCV Alumni. Do we have him? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. And I, first of all, uh, welcome the new fresh uh, graduates and the new IPCV students and congratulate to the new cohort uh, graduate uh, 2021. So uh, it wasn't quite an achievement considering this pandemic and all this stuff. And uh, it, I actually congratulate you from bottom of my heart. Uh, I'm sorry from my sleepy, vo uh, sleepy voice and sleepy eyes because of my uh, jet lag and uh, not sleeping the whole night uh, today. So first of all, uh, we are alumni IPCV. So we try to communicate and we try to work together through the two platform. The first one is this intranet uh, that has been deployed this year, uh, ipcvalumnicommunity.eu, this uh, platform. Uh, alumni. And we also have a social networking uh, group in Facebook that we call alumni uh, IPCV, AIPCV. Uh, so, what is our main objective? So actually, uh, sorry. Uh, so we are trying to create the bridge between the alumni and the current students. We try to help uh, alumni and the current students to get jobs and internships. And uh, we also try to help when they try to move from one city to another. So we have been doing it for last few years. Uh, Christian Martin, he's our advising member right now, who actually uh, overlook everything and uh, suggests us what to do uh, at different 
different steps of our uh, journey here. So uh, as you can see that our team is quite, uh, quite a combination of different cohorts, uh, like from we, me and Rupan from 1820, just the previous batch who graduated. And here we have 15, 17, 16, 18, and 14, 16, and we are looking for new graduates from 2020-21. So uh, actually, this is a very short presentation. So I'll be basically uh, talking about our cohort, especially because uh, the old cohorts, uh, they have already been settled to very good international companies all over the world, and they have been earning a lot uh, I mean, salary wise. So I, I have just focused on the cohort 2018-20 because of the COVID pandemic and the recent advancements of our field. So from our 19 graduates, nine of them actually went for PhD research or teaching. And they have been also working in the different research labs as research assistants or some other research positions. And nine of us have gone to the industries like Microsoft's, and many other Vicom Tech and many other uh, companies in Europe and also in uh, North America. Uh, our graduates have uh, joined uh, uh, different universities and different companies over 16 countries. As you can see the flags here, 16 countries during this pandemic. We have been all over the world. So it shows that our program is like it's quite demanding and it is actually fulfilling the requirements of the industry and the research arena. That is why people are graduates from IPCV are going all over the world. And especially they are working in computer vision, machine learning and data science uh, based on the data that we have from our cohort. So they have uh, people are People have joined Max Planck Institute from our cohort. People have, have done their internship at CERN and also people are joining PhDs in North America as well. So, and you can see that even in this COVID, uh, most of us have managed jobs and research positions within three to four months. It didn't take much time. And the average salary is around 2,500 euros with maximum of 3,900 euros. I'm sorry, I'm talking about these salaries perspectives uh, just to catch uh, some of uh, confused uh, new uh, fresh graduates or maybe in some cases a new uh, IVCV students just to show you the situation of current, situa uh, current uh, job fields. Uh, and you can connect with us through uh, this email and also the Facebook group. And uh, to end, uh, IPCV is a community and IPCV is a program which actually gave us a platform to excel. You can see that all of us have gone different places in the world and are in good in PhDs in very good universities. One of my colleagues, one of my friend, uh, one of my best friend, he is doing his PhD in John Hopkins. One of my friends, best friends, he's doing, she's doing her PhD in Max Planck. So you see, there are a lot of opportunities during your studies. It will, at some time, it may seem it is hectic, but the opportunities are there. After all these uh, homeworks, assignments, and uh, uh, like long hours of uh, uh, industry, uh, like workshops, you will end up in a very good position at the end of the day. And uh, enjoy the time at IPCV. Enjoy Europe. I really miss Europe. I wish I could join you uh, in person. And IPCV actually was one in-person graduation, graduation ceremony. So we hope to join someday. And I'm sorry, I am talking too fast, I guess. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. And you can always connect us. And that will be uh, really appreciate if the new graduates join us uh, to our community, to our uh, board, so that we can bring new energy to this community to work for the advancement of this program and for the next, next generation of IPCV. Thank you. Thank you very much.
invite the new MSc students attending the event online to switch on their cameras. I asked the Dean to greet the new students. Um, I have to, I have to say that uh, uh, seeing the alumni um, movement basically uh, catch catch wind so quickly and 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 speed up actually helps. I think helps new st students to see the prospects uh, that they have in front of them, and uh, probably this will help them to keep uh, motivated, uh, stay focused, uh, even if, if challenging times are coming. So uh, with these thoughts, um, I'm welcoming all the new students, if, if they manage to, to come here in person already, or they're starting online, uh, both cases, um, very, very welcome. And the Faculty of Information Technology and and bionics and i wish you a successful journey through these four semesters and based on that uh, a very joyful uh, further achievements thank you the new students now take the university citizens oath please repeat the oath please stand and repeat the oath as Jaime Corton Gonzalez reads it line by line. Okay. One second. Oh. I, Jaime Corton Gonzalez, solemnly swear that during my university years, I observed the laws of Hungary and the regulations of Pasmani Peter Catholic University at all times. I adopt the goals and requirements set out in the mission statement of the faculty and the university. I make all possible efforts to enrich the values of Pasmani Peter Catholic University passed on to us by our predecessors to carry out my studies honestly and with the best possible results. To contribute to the further development of the professional, human, and community values of the faculty by mastering the latest scientific achievements. I put my knowledge and work into the service of the growth of my home country and humankind. So help me God. Thank you. You're welcome. Please take your seats. I ask the Dean to come forward and shake hands and thereby accept the new MSc students of the faculty as university citizens. Please come forward one by one, one after each other. New students.
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is a tradition, but there is no tradition yet on, on online acceptance of, uh, of the new students. But uh, I hope that we can meet in person with everyone so that we can uh, actually shake hands and accept you uh, formally as a new student. But definitely uh, by this time, everyone that uh, is a new student is accepted as a new student. But please, uh, as soon as you get to Hungary and we can meet, please come and let's have a, a small talk. Thank you. Uh, with this act, our ceremony has come to an end. Uh, please stand up while we listen to Sozat, a Hungarian patriotic song. It is considered as a second national anthem of Hungary beside the hymns. Please remain standing while the directorate walks out. <laughs> 